Okay, let's sketch the graph of y equals 2 cosecant of pi over 2x plus 1. And then we'll figure out the domain and range based on the graph as well. Um, so where to start? Well, a lot of students don't remember what cosecant of x kind of looks like. So let's start out with cosecant of x, relating that back using a reciprocal identity to sine. It's 1 over sine of x. So I always find this a little bit handy that I try to draw my sine graph get some labels on there, and then think through how that kind of connects to our cosecant graph. So remember that sine goes in between one and negative one, and kind of starts at zero and ends at two pi. It's got a middle value here at pi, this is pi over two, and this is um, three pi over two. All right, so just kind of sketching it in, it starts at the origin, goes up, has a highest value here at one, Comes back down, all right, not the best graph, but you'll get the idea as we go through it. Comes down to negative one, and then finishes up back at two pi. So the reciprocal relationship, what we have going on here between cosecant and sine, what that tells us is we take any of these ordered pairs on sine's graph, like this is supposed to be the ordered pair, what, pi over two, comma one. If we take that y value and we flip it upside down, so like one over one, you get the exact same thing, right? You get one over one. So that point is going to be shared between these two graphs. But if we put another point here, like somewhere in here, we have some ordered pair that has one half as a y value. If we flip that upside down and use this reciprocal, it's going to be two over one is going to be on the graph of our cosecant graph. All right. So you'll notice that we're not allowed to divide by zero. Like if we take zero, like let's say here at pi, um, it's the ordered pair pi comma zero, but if we think of that as zero over one and we flip it upside down, we can't do one divided by zero. So that's gonna result in a vertical asymptote on cosecant's graph. So basically wherever you hit zero for our sine graph, you're gonna get a vertical asymptote with the cosecant graph. And this also is true for the or, um, for the y-axis. So I'm kind of trying to illustrate those by putting in some nice vertical dashed lines whenever sine is equal to zero. All right, remember these have this point in common, but then these do these kind of loop sort of things going on here. And then we'll get a downward sort of loop going this direction um, where you can't cross the vertical asymptotes. And then this, of course, repeats itself over and over and over again. All right, so that's the basic shape of the graph that we're going with. Um, so in between negative one and positive one, typically you don't have any graph for a cosecant graph, all right, unless it's been shifted around. So as we go through this, I'm gonna be thinking of this as y equals a times cosecant of bx plus d, and I'm leaving out c because we don't have a number being added or subtracted directly from x, so there's not going to be a horizontal shift um, as far as transformations go. But let's kind of explore what each one of these other values does to our graph. All right, first let's think about vertical. All right, the vertical changes that are going to happen on our graph are going to be um, caused by any numbers attached to the entire function. So in our case, first I notice that a is 2, right? We have a multiple out in front of the entire function. What that's going to affect is it's going to affect our values on the y-axis. All right, so initially it's 1 and negative 1 go on our y-axis. But in this case, we would refer to this as being a stretch where each of our y-values gets multiplied by, in this case, 2. So our new y-values are going to go in between negative 2 and positive 2. All right, so those kind of be the labels on our y-axis, technically twice as far from the x-axis as the original graph. All right, the other component that's going to affect this vertically is going to be d. d works out to be a positive 1. And thinking about transformations, we've just added 1 to the entire original starting cosecant graph. So this is going to move everything up one unit. So again, just going to look at kind of the labels. We are going to go from 2, go up one unit to 3. And then negative 2, when we go up one unit, that's going to go to negative 1, right? Negative 2 plus 1 makes negative 1 for our new labels on the y-axis. All right, next, horizontal. All right, we do have some change in the horizontal um, 
labeling as well. All right, this comes from our b equaling pi over two. Now typically what we can do is we can calculate the period of a function by using the original period. And then we divide it by whatever b is. So the original period for cosecant is two pi, right? It starts at zero, ends at two pi. But now we wanna divide that by our value for b, so divide by pi over two. All right, let's do a little bit of simplifying in this case. Um, so if we have two pi divided by pi over two, let's go ahead and I'm gonna multiply both numerator and denominator by two here because I don't like leaving fractions inside of fractions. So in the denominator, multiplying by two counteracts this dividing by two. So we're gonna end up with multiplying numerators together, two pi times two makes four pi. And then the denominator, after that nice simplifying down, we're left with a pi. Well, we can do more simplifying and say the period is going to be 4. All right, so let's think about how that plays out. We didn't move left or right, so we're going to begin at 0. This time we're going to end at 4, and we need some labels in the middle. So labels tend to consist of halfway is going to be 2, right? Halfway between 0 and 4. Halfway between 0 and 2 is going to be 1 then I don't think it's too bad to figure out that's going to be three for our, our last fifth label. So we've got all our labels. We just have to put this together with the, the same pattern as far as what shape our graph's going to be like. All right, so y-axis, nice x-axis, and I'm going to extend this a little bit, make it a little bit taller. x-axis, we start at zero. We said end at four. We've got two, one, three. All right, on our y-axis, again, we're going three and negative one. So one, two, three, and negative one. All right, we are going to have a vertical asymptote there at zero, halfway through, and at four. All right, at the end of that first period, just like what we had going on up at that original starting graph, right? It was where it began halfway across the period, and then one full period in. All right, and then what I want to do is I want to line up, basically write that first value, that one. We have to have a lowest value from a loop here at three. And then just be mindful of the vertical asymptotes, right? You have to kind of keep it in between those. And then our next value we want to include is a highest value going on at, I guess it's going to be three negative one. So maybe a little bit difficult to see here. I'm going to erase our three and move it to the other side. The three's up here now. So three negative one. And then this is a loop kind of going down. Maybe loops the wrong terminology there, but it's going to be in between those vertical asymptotes. So there's a, a nice graph of our situation, what this graph's going to look like. Not too bad to get there. Well, let's talk about the domain and range. All right, the domain in this case, you may notice that those uh, vertical asymptotes, none of those are gonna be part of our domain. We're not allowed to have X values, points on our graph as zero, two, or four. So maybe we just identify this as our X values are not allowed to equal any multiples of two. All right, so I'm gonna re represent this as X cannot equal two times K for any integer k. And then let's think about our y values, all right? Because that's what we need for our range. So if I squish the entire graph into the y-axis, let's think it goes all the way down to negative infinity, right? We have arrows going down forever, never included. And then for that bottom loop, it goes all the way up to a y value of negative one. And we do have a point right here at the top of our bottom loop. All right, we're missing values between negative one and three. So our next value is gonna start at three, included, and it's gonna go all the way up to positive infinity because we have arrows at the top going up towards positive infinity. So hopefully that makes sense why we're missing the values between negative one and three because there's this gap in between negative one and three where we don't have any graph. Um, for this one. So I hope this helps out as you're working on graphing, cosecant graphs, 
and getting labels all correct the whole way through as well as finding the domain and range. Good luck.